Awesome. Good morning. Um, I'm very excited for this word and I'm excited for what God is busy with. We are nearing December and I already saw the first Christmas lights last night when we were walking. I'm like, it's October. Um, but yes, yeah, season is changing and I'm very excited for what God is busy with. We've been very busy with a lot of stuff. We've had a youth week, well, two youth weeks. We've had a youth camp and a kids camp. And um, I had the privilege to minister at a women's, con a women's camp this weekend. Um, and it's an honor to just live a life of victory and to live a life of, of truly walking after a relationship with God. And something that goes with that is to have conversations with Him. And that truly defines us, is, is to have a conversation with God and, and to have that intimate relationship. So, my man, can I give you a gebruik? <laughs> awesome. So I'm going to use these cups as an example, but this time you have to go out the door, out the door, <laughs> out the door. because sometimes that's how far God feels. Hey, out the door. Okay. Thank you, my man. Okay. Take an all. There we go. Okay. So now we'll be certain that I won't be able to be, to hear. Okay. So. Whilst I'm using this as an illustration, you must imagine that you are on the one side and God is on the other side. So, Melifia, I can't slide. You can decide what you want to say to me. You can be the one speaking. Okay, it needs to be, there needs to be attention and I'm going to listen for this message. Okay, let's see. We didn't, we didn't agree on this beforehand. Ah, he said that I look beautiful this morning. I love that. Okay, no, it's no, another one. Just say again. Oh, um, he said that my voice has bells in them. Awesome. Thank you, my man. You can also it also. You can just put it down in front of the chest. Okay. So Yeah. Now that was just a bit of a silly exercise. We didn't practice that beforehand, but it's awesome how beautiful this works. You're more than welcome if you want to stand in the kitchen and test it out and see what happens. Um, but this is the main base for this, to hear the voice of God, is we must believe that God wants to speak to us. We must believe that um, He wants to speak to us every day about everything, to me. He wants to speak to me. He wants us to hear his voice. He wants us to respond. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. I call, we call this um, God's telephone number. So if you wondered what his mobile number is, it's 33-3 or 333. Um, call to me and I will answer. So when you pick up the caller and you say, God, I want to speak to you. I want to hear your voice. He promises in his word that I will answer. And show you great and mighty things, fenced in and hidden, which you do not know, do not distinguish and recognize, and have knowledge of and understand. So God says, if you call to me, I will answer you, you will hear me. Not only will I hear you, but I will share with you treasures. I will share with you beautiful things that will change your, your mind, that will change your heart, that will influence you. I want to have a look with you that what is God now saying to me? So when he is on the other side of this cup, what is he busy saying to me? What is on his heart? What is the agenda? Now, words that God speak will always build, encourage, and comfort. And we see that in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 3. Now, this specific verse refers to prophecies, but it's God speaking through someone. So it's still the exact same principle. But on the other hand, the one who prophesies, who interprets the divine and will and purpose in inspired preaching and teaching, speaks to men for their upbuilding, their constructive and constructive spiritual progress and encouragement and consolation. So that is the build, encourage and comfort. So if you want to know whether it's the words of God, look for whether it builds, encourages and comforts. God says relationship. When he speaks to us, he says relationship, connection, intimacy. That is his heart. John 17, 21 says um, that they all may be one. This, these are Jesus's words. Just as you father and me um, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us so that the world may believe and be convinced 
that you have sent me. Now, I don't do this often. Normally, when I preach in Afrikaans, I, I use the English verse, but I want to add the Afrikaans one here today because this one just says it in a whole deeper level. Johannes 17, vers 21 sê, Ek bid dat hulle allemaal een mag wees, net soos u vader, in een hechte verhouding met my, en ek met u is, dat jylle ook een hechte verhouding met ons, met ons, met ons mag leef, so die wereld kan geloo, dat u my gesteer het, en die hechte verhouding, that's what God says, when he speaks to us, he speaks relationship, a hechte verhouding, a tightness, a connection is what he speaks. God says, give me your pain. Psalm 147 verse 3 says, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds, curing their pain and their sorrows. When God is speaking to us, when we've got him on the other side of the line, like when you're phoning someone, when we've got him on the other side of the line, he says, come on, give me your pain, give it to me. I will take that, whether it is physical pain, whether it is a heart that is broken, he says, and you must hear, give it to me, give it to me, I want that, I will take that. God says, I am forgiven. And this message, man, this sets us free in so many ways. Because we often think that when we will hear the voice of God, he will say, you are guilty for this and I condemn you for that and you need to fix this. And you... But what God says when we've got him on the other side of the line is not that you are guilty for this and that. He says, I'm forgiven. He says, I have forgiven you by Jesus dying on the cross. So that distance that we experience, I mean, this one had to go all the way out the door. Now, the, the room is not that big, but still the concept is there is that we feel that we need to have a distance from holy and pure and clean and, and glorified God so that we don't feel as dirty and as far. But the truth is, he says, when he speaks to me, you're forgiven. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we freely admit that we have sinned and confess our sins, he is faithful and just, true to his own nature and promises, and will forgive our sins, dismiss us our lawlessness, and continuously cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Because now there is this debate of, okay, so um, it, it was beautiful on the kids' camp. Um, Mar uh, no, Veronica did a righteousness message, and then there was this whole um, physical explanation of Jesus and and how he wants to get um, come close to us and then there was a normal person with a with a black bag over that was Madlise and she had um, all sorts of rubbish stuck to her and then Jesus came which was Isaac and he tore off the black bag and he said I forgive you I take it away and then Reinhardt was sitting at the back with me and I was so privileged to be able to share that moment with him and he asked me but mommy what if we sin again and I'm like aha then we have the black bag on again with the garbage on us. And you know what Jesus does? He says, no, come on. You're forgiven. You're continuously cleansed. You're forgiven. And then he tears it off again and says, don't go put that on again. It's not who you are. And then barachtach, we go put it on again. And then he says, I've forgiven you completely, perfectly, in everything, continuously cleansing us. And I had the privilege to put that building block in place with our four-year-old to say, continuously, every time, because this is what we think. We think, okay, now we confess our sins. We say, Jesus, we're sorry. We want relationship with you. And then we mess up again, because that's just who we are. We mess up again. And then we think, ah, oh, I can't go back again now. I mean, what would that look like? I've just said, skisine, and now I need to go back again and say, skisine, and skisine. And, and then we feel, no, at some point we've used up all of the grace that God gives. It's not the truth. Continuously cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Everything not in conformity to his will, in purpose, thought, and action. And now because of this, God says, I have to forgive. Ephesians 4 verse 32 says, and become useful, that, that if you want to be useful, if you want to be a tool used by God, used in people's lives, used in this world, and become useful and helpful and kind to one another, 
tender-hearted, compassionate, understanding, loving-hearted. So if you want to be any one of those, if you want to just pick one from the menu, useful, helpful, kind, tender-hearted, compassionate, understanding, loving-hearted, you can take your pick, like in, um, in Starbucks where you can say what you want in your, in your coffee, you can take your pick. Isaac always loves a, butter, a butterscotch in there, but you can take your pick which one you want to be. This is the key for you to get to that. Forgive one another readily and freely. So that's the key. As God in Christ forgave you, he says that you can now forgive. Why? Not because you're so awesome. Not because you grasp something that no one else does, but because you are forgiven. It's the only reason why we can forgive. I always use this example and I'm going to use it again. If I asked you to paint this wall red and all that I give you is a bucket with blue paint, will you be able to paint it red? No, that's just simple maths. But if I give you a bucket with red paint, will you be able to paint it red? It's simple maths. You will. Why? Because God has given you forgiveness. We don't even need to use our own forgiveness for people. We can just take the forgiveness that he has given us and we can use it. And that's why it's easy to forgive. Because it's just take and give. It's like when I, when I give um, a glass of water to Renat and I say, please go and give it to Omar. And then he takes the water and he goes and he gives it. He didn't even have to pour the water. He didn't have to get the glass. I gave him the glass and the water. And I said, you just go and give it. And that's what God does. He says, forgive readily. Be ready to forgive. Stand with forgiveness in your hand and say, come on, come on. Where can I forgive? Who can I forgive? For what can I forgive? I've got much, much forgiveness. And freely. Don't put a cost on you forgiving someone else. Because you received it freely. It is like someone giving you, when, when Ronald was little, we received a lot of baby stuff from people, a stroller and clothes and whatever, whatever. It would be a little nasty if I were to, that what I received freely, sell now to someone else. So we gave away stuff. We said, you can take this because it has been given to us freely and now we can freely give it. And that's what God says. Come on, I've given it to you. Give it freely. Don't put a high cost on someone that you need to forgive. Okay. The next thing that God says, and this is always where God starts with me. The moment I go to him and I ask him, Dad, what is on your heart? He says, I love you. And I'm like, I get that, but what else? And he's like, but I love you, I love you, I love you. I'm like, okay, great. I love you too. Ephesians 3 verse 18. That you may have the power and the strong and be strong to apprehend and grasp with all the saints, God's devoted people, the experience of that love. We need strength and power to understand God's love. That we, we need, and that strength and power we also get from Him. His Spirit infused in us. What is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth? It almost sounds like we're, we're planning to send up a, a parcel with courier guy. We need to now measure it. How big is it? And God just says, you won't be able to measure this one. It's just too wide, too deep, too high, too everything. That is my love for you. God says, I am your best friend. Achen, it's like that a beautiful session on the kids camp um, with the BFF, best friend forever. And he had this necklace with the two halves of the heart that you put together. And God says, I am that. I am your BFF. And you can see that these two guys, they play together all day. They just enjoy each other's presence and they just... They enjoy being together. And that's what God says. He says, I am your friend. I do not call you servants, slaves any longer. For the servant does not know what his master is doing or working out. But I have called you my friends. Once again, that personal that Isaac just spoke about. Because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. And there once again, we can see the hearing. We can see that. Jesus heard from his father and then he translated, he gave it to us. Um, I have revealed to you everything that I have learned from him. How do I now know when it's not God speaking? So we will hear and thoughts will come into your mind and you need to be able to distinguish what is the voice of God and what is not the voice of God. So the voice of God will always build, encourage and comfort. That's what it does. So when a thought comes into your mind or you see something or someone says something, then you need to scrutinize that. And you need to say, okay, does it build me? 
Does it encourage me and does it comfort me? If it does not and it steals, it kills and it destroys. We know where it comes from, where it comes from. John 10, 10 says, the thief comes only in order to steal, kill and destroy. And we need to shut down that line. We need to say, nah, -uh, I don't want to listen to that because that will poison your mind if you continue hearing that. Imagine this. Imagine you haven't met someone. Let's say it's a, a rugby player, a famous person, but you haven't met them personally. But now you're speaking to someone who apparently now knows them. But all that they're saying is they are unforgiving, they are um, they think too much about themselves, they are greedy, what, 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 they say a bunch of stuff, a bunch of stuff. Will you have um, an openness and an eagerness to meet that person and to build a relationship? No. You will think, that'll be a waste of time. I don't want to meet that person. But that's what the enemy does. The enemy comes only in order to steal. What does he want to steal? Your joy, your peace, your love, um, your identity. Man, he wants to steal that one because he knows the moment you know who you are, uh-oh, there's trouble. He wants to kill. What does he want to kill? He wants to kill your desire and your longing for a relationship with God. He wants to kill your passion and the destiny that God has put on your life. What does he want to destroy? He wants to destroy everything. Your relationships, your health, your finances, everything about you. That's his mission. That's his agenda. That's not God. When you hear something that says you're not good enough, you don't measure up, you will not make this, you must know, steal, kill, destroy, not God. Only when it builds, encourages and comforts, I came, this is Jesus' words, that they may have and enjoy life. Come on, we're not designed to just survive through every day. We're not designed to just kind of bear, grin and bear through every year and rest maybe for three weeks and then we're designed to enjoy life and have it in abundance. So not just should you enjoy life, you should let it bubble over from you. And I, I must say, this is one of my favorite verses as well, because life and everything about it just passionately excites me. Um, every moment that I get to live life is just an awesome moment. And I want it to overflow to the full till it overflows. So if you're not experiencing overflow of life yet, you need to say, God, speak to me. I need to hear I am loved. I need to hear I am forgiven. I need to hear I am accepted. I need to hear that more and more and more so that I can have this overflow of life. Last night, the Lord shared this with me. He said, don't doubt whether you hear his voice. And I'm like, Lord, I'm sorry where I've doubted. Was this you? Was the... Because I now have the full proof. Test. Kill, steal, destroy. Build in courage and comfort. So if I take that, you know, in school, when you had to make a decision, way back when you had to make a decision, maybe you also did this, wrote two columns and you said pros and cons. Okay, let's say I did this. Is that what, what will be the pros? And it will be this, 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 and this. And what will be the cons? This, 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 and this. So what will be the positive and the negative impact of this if I made this decision or if I did this or, or what? And when we hear something, we need to make that list. I mean, you say, in which column does it, fill, does, it, does it fit? Does it fit in the God column? Build, encourage, comfort. Does it fit in the enemy column? Steal, kill, destroy. And then we immediately know what to do with this. But the problem comes in. We doubt whether we hear his voice. We wonder, hmm, was that God? I don't know. Maybe I'm uncertain. And I, I shared yesterday with the, at the women's conference when we went through the miscarriage. The thing that got me the most, obviously losing a baby, obviously dreaming about this child, but that got me the most is that I experienced in my heart that God said to me the same way that he said everything else, that he said to me, this child will live. And that's what got me the most. For many months after that, I had to deal with that. I had to deal with that disappointment. And that's what the enemy does. The booger. Kill, steal, destroy. He wants to destroy that closeness that I, have, that I had with God in that moment. That, that I know that this is his voice. And that confidence that I have in his voice. I always joke. I know that it's not this way. But I always joke. When God says something, I just run and I jump. 
And then I, I, I see this picture of God saying, oh, it's the God say. and then he puts the plan in place. Obviously, that's not how it works. He has the plan in place and he knows and what, what, what. But that's just me. I want to hear the voice of God and I want to jump on the voice of God as quickly as I can. And that's what that damaged in that moment. Because now this um, confidence that I had in the voice of God was damaged. And, but God says this morning, don't doubt whether you hear my voice. No. On the youth camp I shared, um, I spoke about in emotional baggage, about believe that you are at the right place at the right time, busy with the right thing. And then even if you are in the wrong place at the wrong time, busy with the wrong thing, your faith in the fact that you believe that that is what God says, that faith will make all things work together for good. Don't know how, but I know that God makes a way in that. So I want to challenge you to be confident and say, I believe that this is what God shared. So what I do, you, you can decide if this one might work with you. So I say, God, okay, this is what I experience you're saying. But if I'm wrong, please correct me. Show me what I'm missing. Show me where I am totally off point that of what I should be doing or should be hearing. And then I carry on with the thing that I now said. I believe that this is what God said. And then I see what happens. And then don't be fooled by smoke and mirrors. Smoke and mirrors is things appear to not work out. It appear to not be what it should be. Smoke and mirrors should actually be a sign for you. Oh, okay, I'm at the right track. So I test my peace level. I have a peace meter on the inside. And I say, okay, do I have peace about this decision? Yes, I can see that there is a little bit of resistance. But do I, do I still have peace? Yes, I have peace. Okay, then I push through. Um, and then I see that there are all sorts of stuff happening, but do I still have peace? Okay, yes, I have peace. Good. I will press on and I will endure and I will not doubt. Throw all doubt out the door and say, Lord, I believe this is what you're saying to me and I will respond to that. John 10, 27. The sheep that are my own hear and are listening to my voice. I want to ask you, are you his sheep? Did you give your life to God? Yes or no? Yes. Then you hear and you listen to his voice. It's, it's simple math. We complicate it and we think, but, but do I hear? Don't I hear? If you belong to him, you hear his voice. It might look different from person to person. One person can hear his voice through a song and you feel that is exactly what God is ministering to you. Another one through a scripture or songs in scripture and then a movie. And just believe that you hear his voice. Isaac always shares this about um, it's Elijah that came to the widow. Elijah, the Lord said to Elijah that I said to the widow that um, she must make you food. And then he came to her and he said to her, you must make me food. And then she was like, oh no, but I didn't know. I, I don't have anything. But did the Lord say that he spoke to her? Yes, he said. So yes, he did. So then she must have heard him. She just didn't know that she heard him. But stop doubting. My own ear and are listening to my voice. Bottom line. That's the bottom line. Don't negotiate with it. Don't doubt it. Don't wonder it. Don't, don't reason yourself out of hearing the voice of God. Be confident that you hear his voice. And I know them and they follow me. Now, God is not far. And this is um, a beautiful event. I, I want to call it the moment we realize this truth. That God is not far. So I want to share a, a story with you about, I heard it many, many years ago, about this orphanage in, in Russia, where someone was walking through the halls in this orphanage, and it was quiet, not a peep. There were little babies in there, a um, few weeks old, older kids, but during the night, no one was crying. And I mean, if anyone has ever had a child, you know, at night, they sometimes cry. They call for you, they need help. But these children are just quiet. So the guy asked the owner or the manager or whatever of the orphanage, why, how? And he said, well, the kids used to cry in the beginning, but then they realized no one is coming because there wasn't anyone to go to them. And then they stopped crying. They stopped responding. They stopped reacting. And that's what we do with God is we feel that he is far. We feel that no matter whether we speak or not, he won't respond. And in this morning, I want to challenge you to understand this. 
Okay, so this is what God does. He says in Psalm 34 verse 18, The Lord is close. This is what he does. He says, come on. He says, come close to me. See what happens. And he draws us closer. He says, come close to me. And I will come close to you. So now he's speaking. And I'm close. And I can hear. Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> he says it's a beautiful message that I'm sharing. Awesome. Thank you, Mama. So God says, I'm just going to go one back. The Lord is close. He's close. The distance that he, we experienced with God is nullified. He says, you think that I'm far. But while what Jesus had did on the cross, I removed that closeness. The Lord is close to those who are of a broken heart. And save such as are crushed with sorrow for sin and are humbly and thoroughly penitent. God says, this sin, this distance that there was between us, I dealt with it. Come on. I dealt with it. I took it away. Now he says, come close to me and he will come close to you. Come close to God and he will come close to you. That is a promise. You know what a promise looks like? That's a promise. The promise from James 4 verse 8 says, I will come close. I won't stay far. The only reason why he still feels far is because we don't realize this. The righteousness. The, the distance that Jesus took away. And often we say, ah, oh, I sinned again. And then we miss the message that my four-year-old grasped in this week. Oh, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That closeness is still there. God's voice is not only close. It is in me. It's not here like this. We, we think that, but there's still a distance there. There's still about 20 centimeters there. It's not that far even. It's in me. John 14, 16 says, and I will ask the Father, these are Jesus' words, and he will give you another comforter. Counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and stand by that he may remain with you forever. So there is the fear of God leaving me at some point in my life out of the water forever. Okay. John 14, 17. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, welcome, take to its heart because it does not see him, or know him or recognize him. But you know and recognize him for, so the spirit of truth, he lives with you constantly, constantly, and will be in you. He says, this is more like it. I now live in you. The Holy Spirit live in you. And if you are led by this spirit, you're a son of God and you're not an orphan like those orphans in the, in the Russian orphanage. He says, I live in you. I hear the voice of God. I do the voice of God. I am a son of God. And may this be your cry on the inside. Whenever you doubt whether you hear his voice, say to yourself, self, you hear the voice of God. You do the voice of God. You are a son of God. Until everything in you believes that, he now lives in you. This distance, dealt with. He pulled you closer. No, Felix was a fishfanger. <laughs> feel like a fisherman. <laughs> he pulled you closer and he came to live in you. And his voice is with you and he speaks to you. I want to give you an opportunity to hear the voice of God because that changes everything. When we can hear his voice, man, everything is different. When we can hear his voice, we know what to do. We know where to go. We know who to be and who not to be. I want to pray with you and then I want to play this song for you. Holy Spirit, thank you that you live in us. Jesus, thank you that you paid the price, that the distance can be, God, can, can be gone. And God, thank you for giving your son that we can have this unity, oneness, unity. 
in each other. We want to hear your voice. We want to respond to that. We don't want to be our orphans. We want to hear what you say to us. We want that to change our lives. I keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure love. Am I more than just the sum of every high and every low? Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know. Awesome. May you choose to believe that he lives in you, that this distance was dealt with, that you hear his voice and that you can respond to that. Amen.